In your informational speech, you're required to use a visual aid in the presentation. Of course, you can choose to use a di uh, visual aids in additional presentations if you wish, but you're required to do it in the informational speech. And so I want to go over today some of the tips for creating good visual effects and some guidelines for how to use visual effects effectively. The first step in analyzing uh, the use of visual effects, of course, is to talk about the different kinds of visual aids you can use. Uh, and the first are objects or models. An object is literally anything you can hold in your hand as you're doing your Perhaps speech. Perhaps you're talking about baseball pitches, and so you're having a baseball in your hand to show how the proper holds are. Perhaps you're talking about tennis swings, and so you have your racket. Perhaps you're doing a speech on um, the physiology of the eyeball, and so you have one of those elaborate plastic models of the eye that you can find in the biology department. All of those are objects. Uh, and objects can, anything that you can pick up and hold, it could be considered an object. Now, sometimes things are too big to pick up or hold, or in the case of an eye, too small or too difficult. I mean, I guess there's no reason you couldn't hold an eye, but acquiring one to use in your speech might be difficult. That's why in that case, you use a model. If you are doing a speech about the Eiffel Tower, Obviously, you can't bring the Eiffel Tower to the classroom. Uh, if you're doing a speech about uh, an atom, you can't make an atom big enough to be seen or, or, or visualized. So we use a model. You get a model of the Eiffel Tower. You get a model of the human eye. You get a model of the atom, of the solar system. Anything that is too big or too small to be practically hand handled in the classroom can be replaced with a model. The next type of visual aid that you can use in the classroom are photographs and Obviously, drawings. the biggest issue when using photographs or drawings are the size. Are they going to be large enough to be effectively viewed by everyone in the classroom? Um, this can be solved by taking it to a place like Staples, UPS, any kind of print store, and having enlargements made. But those enlargements have, are going to be a little costly. You've got to be... Um, you've got to make sure that you are doing something you can afford to be doing because when you start looking at blowing a photo up large enough to make it useful in a classroom, you're talking about several dollars worth of, of printing. And if you're using multiple photographs, you've got multiple charges. And so um, the alternative might be, to be, might be to look at some presentation software like uh, Prezi or Photoshop, which we'll talk about later in the lecture today. You can also use graphs in your speech. A graph can be defined as a visual aid used to show statistical trends and patterns. And you see all kinds of graphs used in different, um, different presentations. You can have bar graphs, you can have line graphs, you can have pie graphs. Um, graphs are used to make numbers understandable. And so if you're using a speech, you're doing a speech that's going to have statistical data, you might look at the use of graphs, a graph in your speech. And graphs have the same limitation that pictures or drawings do. It's got to be large enough to be seen. However, reproducing a graph and making it big enough to be seen by an audience is not as costly as it is to blow up a photo and make it large enough to be seen by the audience. The fourth type of visual aid you can use is a chart. chart is similar to a graph. It's a visual aid that summarizes a large block of information, usually in a list form. Our textbook provides this illustration as an example of what kind of information charts can present. This is a chart representing the percentage of uh, American immigrants by country of birth. And so uh, it has a large block of information uh, representing the many, many countries that people come to our country from. Obviously, this information could be presented in the text of the speech, the spoken word, but the chart allows you to condense that and put it in a much more um, usable, digestible format. Um, again, the problem with charts is that you've got to make sure they're large enough to be read by everybody in the class. One of the most popular forms of visual aid, but also the easiest to use improperly. We live is video. in a video world, and video is ubiquitous. You find it everywhere you go. Um, 
the problem with using video in a speech is that there are many challenges to using it correctly. First, is it queued up correctly and ready to go in the speech? I don't know how many times in a speech class I've had a student plan to use a video segment as their visual aid, and they, they think they have it ready to go, but when it's time for the video in the speech, they have to get the video queued up, they have to get it to the right start point. Uh, one of those annoying commercials comes on that you have to wait through before you get to the video. You've got to make sure that you can, you can avoid all of that to correctly and effectively use video. The other problem is that you can only use a little bit of video in your speech. If you're doing a six minute speech, you can't have a video that's longer than 60 seconds and have your speech be what it needs to be. I had students just last semester who did a speech, their speech was two minutes, their visual aid, their video was five. I'm not grading a video, I'm grading your speech. And so the, the visual aid needs to be a very small part. If you're using video, it should be no more, no more than 60 seconds. The other issue with video is resolution. Now, most people get the video they're using from YouTube. And if it's a high density, um, I mean, a high definition video clip, you're in good shape. But if it's a low definition video clip, something that will look really nice on the screen of your iPhone or your computer screen is going to be grainy and hard to see when you blow it up big enough to put on a projector uh, on a projector screen. Uh, you've got to make sure that the resolution is adequate to allow for a, an attractive image on screen. In some cases, it's appropriate for the speaker to use their own body or the body of a volunteer as a visual aid. Perhaps you're doing a speech on the Heimlich Maneuver. Uh, it would be very appropriate to have a volunteer from the classroom to stand up and help you demonstrate how the Heimlich, Heimlich Maneuver is done. Perhaps you're demonstrating golf swings uh, and you yourself are a golfer and you're going to show us with your own body the appropriate swing and follow through, whatever the terminology is, for a good golf swing. Those would be appropriate uses of uh, yourself or a volunteer as a visual aid. If you are using a volunteer, you need to make, make sure that they know ahead of time and consent because you're going to spoil your speech if you ask somebody to step up and be, uh, be a volunteer and you have trouble getting one someone to do that or if the person you choose doesn't want to cooperate. Um, you, you need to rehearse with them. They need to know what they're getting into so that everything goes smoothly. The most common approach to a visual aid for a speech is either PowerPoint or Prezi or some other form of presentation software. I figured that probably everybody who is uh, in college at this point has used PowerPoint or Prezi before, but just in case you haven't, I have included uh, several tutorial videos uh, for both PowerPoint and Prezi, as well as a kind of humorous video by a, a speaker named Don McMillan about some of the common errors that everybody uses in PowerPoint. And I would encourage you to, to look at those, particularly the Don McMillan one. It's just fun. Um, but the big thing with PowerPoint, Prezi, and other software is make sure that you keep it simple and usable. It's so easy for PowerPoint to become about all of the animation and all of the, 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 the words dropping and bouncing and zooming across the screen. You don't really need that. For an effective speech, you want it to be lean, you want it to be clean. Uh, keep it simple. So those are the types of visual aids you can use in your speech. An object or model, photographs or drawings, graphs, charts, videos, the speaker's body or the a volunteer's body, and presentation software like PowerPoint or Prezi. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about how to create your visual aids and then how to use them effectively in the speaking situation.